guys, welcome back to the Tony Wong Podcast. This episode is different from our last episodes. This one's a bit lighter and hopefully just as interesting or actually even more interesting. This episode is about pandemic dating, masculinity, and changing expectations. And today I not only have one guest, but a panel of three very attractive women here to talk to us about online dating, what type of man they're looking for, what they're finding and what they're not finding. So this is super interesting to me because I myself just started online dating for the first time about three or four weeks ago during the pandemic. I had never done it because, I don't know, quite frankly, I didn't seem to need to. I met people in all different ways, you know, in restaurants, through friends, being set up, etc. But because of the pandemic, that wasn't possible anymore. So I ventured into online dating and I was quite surprised. My only experience was swiping left and right on my friends' Tinder accounts, which were super fun. But based on what they were telling me, I certainly didn't want to go through all the consuming effort and numbers of chats and going through and trying to get a, a phone call and then possibly, possibly meeting up. But anyways, I dove in and when I did, about a week into it, I started doing research as to what other people typically experience. And it was much like what I had just described about my friend's Tinder experience. It was a numbers game. I read one very long Atlantic article on dating and it talked about a 1% response rate just to get to the initial text alone, let alone a phone call and let alone meeting up in person. But what I was experiencing was something different. I had a much bigger response rate. And so I was wondering why that was. So I reached out to these women to see what, from their perspective, who they were looking for, who they responded to, who they didn't respond to, and what they weren't finding. So anyways, enough about me. I'm super excited to talk to Andrea Hollenbeck, Jenna Borden, and Kanani Lynn Kroll. Please help me welcome them to the podcast. So this whole thing started because I started online dating for the first time four weeks in. <laughs> and so uh, I go on to Reddit and I start figuring out like, wait, how many conversations am I supposed to have at once? How, like how many connections, how's this whole thing work? And I start realizing that uh, most people are, you know, they, they carry one to five conversations at once, maybe 10. And I was like, whoops, I have like 15 going, so I have to scale that back. And then I started reading that uh, Atlantic article that talks about, you know, like some dude who is swiping 300 times before he gets one person to respond via text. And then it moves to video call and then, and then to a date. And so I notice certain things and I start having these questions about you know, I, I, I'm getting a fair amount of responses. The inbox is piling up, the match, the, like the whole match section is piling up and I start noticing trends and that's what got me to bring you guys on board and I'm wondering what's going on, right? I have my own theories, but I'll save them. So I'm wondering what you guys are, have been looking for and you guys are in different stages of, you know, being single or not being single. Um, I'm wondering what you guys are looking for, what you haven't been able to find, both today and in the past. And then we can start getting into some of the factors that lead up to why that is, what's changing, how our expectations changing. So I just want to set that as the background. So maybe I start with a question. What are you guys looking for in a guy? And what can't you find? Such a loaded question. Is it? <laughs> yeah. It's such a big question. Okay. Um, basically, I guess, obviously, through each section of your life, it changes, right? So sure. right now, being 30, I'm looking for someone that's mentally stable and emotionally intelligent. And... That doesn't necessarily mean it comes with age, but that's what I'm looking for when I look at profiles. So mentally stable, mm 
and emotionally, what was it? Intelligent. E emotionally intelligent. So is that something new that you've been looking for or were you always looking for that? Um, I think, I mean, in my early 20s to mid 20s that I didn't care. Mm -hmm. I think I was just doing my own thing, trying to have a good time, whatever happened, happened. But now that I'm over certain aspects of that going out life and cycling through people in a certain way, then I'm looking for an actual connection. So that comes down to how stable emotionally and mentally are you. Intelligence wise, it's just understanding your own emotions, understanding how to connect with people emotionally, right. not bringing in traumas and baggage from other relationships or so that's a topic I want to uh, dive deeper into, but before we do that, what, what have you guys found? Go ahead. Um, I would have to 100% agree when I was in my 30s, but to add on to that, I was also looking for someone that was willing to be monogamous and that wanted the relationship, like for the long haul. So I wanted to have kids, right? So for me, it was much more about picking a good partner, right? Unfortunately, um, I would scare them off by asking too many questions, I was told, because I was emotionally what I think is sound and well, and my, the man I was picking was not. So it was a really good way to scare them off right away. So that's interesting. I've heard you say something similar, like the, the asking questions and related to emotional intelligence. I don't recall. Refresh my memory. Let me see. What would you say you're looking for? So oh, yeah, like you could tell within a couple conversations where they were emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you can, t like, I can pick up real quick on their vibes and if they're just trying to mm -hmm. <laughs> get with you Getting or with whatever, yeah. or they're not really into, like, trying to be serious with anything right now. Right. Um, for me, it's, inter it's an interesting question because at this exact moment in my life, a relationship is my lowest priority um, because I'm, focusing on, I'm working on myself, I'm work, working on building my future businesses that I'd like to create, and I don't want anything to slow me down. So it's more like if it happens in this time, it happens, but I'm not looking for it. But when I was kind of seeking somebody, it, I definitely, similar to Jenna, like I would say it, what I was looking for then is was not really the right things. And it hasn't been until I've taken this last year or so to really do some introspection and reflect on myself and what I need and what I want and things I need to heal and whatever, like that it became clear. And so when it does happen, when I do meet a person, I definitely want them to have, like resonating with the girls, what they're saying here, that emotional stability. And it's not necessarily like, oh my gosh, you can't express sadness or this or that, but it's more like you can have an adult conversation about I'm feeling this way right now, mm -hmm. or you did this and it makes me feel like, you know, and just have a productive conversation rather than play childish games or blow up at each other. Mm -hmm. um, but moreover, someone to have fun with, build a, a life with, someone that's stable, that has their shit together. Like, So you, there's some very interesting things, <laughs> and I really want to understand because, you know, I kind of work in that realm of like well, mindfulness and emotional intelligence. So that's not new for me, but in the context of dating, I bet this is going to be super new to a lot of the guys. Because I don't think the guys know, I think they have thoughts about what women are looking for, and that shows up on their profile. But I don't think they're aware that this is what you guys are looking for. So real quick to fast forward, being that I am a little bit older now, the main thing, the non-negotiable that I require is to do the work. That's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. It's just someone that is all in. And it, all in's gonna always change and flow. However, that someone's willing to do the work. And that's what I'm not finding in LA. The yep. second we hit a wall or a ledge, they're, they're gone. They're gone. Mm -hmm. and are, so, are they gone because that scares them off or are they gone just because they don't even know what you're talking about or? No, it's, I mean, the theme, because I always ask afterwards, the theme is that it's just too much work and there's too many, there's too many other women. So why put in the work with this one when they're just on to the next? And I really, I've only surface. seen that in LA. I've never seen it in Hawaii, Phoenix, Chicago, New York, anywhere else except here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's LA great. is a big market. Yeah. There's a lot of us. Mm -hmm. well, aren't there more, um, wait, is, are there more men or more women in LA? 
I think, aren't there more women? I don't know. I think there's more, more women. More women? I don't know. Denver has more men, by the way. Hey. <laughs> okay. I always wanted to live in Colorado. Uh, <laughs> so that's interesting. You're looking for someone emotionally stable, uh, wait, mentally stable and emotionally intelligent. Um, so is this something new? I, I know you said it's, you weren't looking for that before, but how new is this? I think everyone has to get there themselves to fully look for that. I, I mean, I definitely wasn't there, like I said, in my early 20s, late to mid 20s. Um, and that's, I think that's kind of what you were saying, right? right? It's like the moment you get to a point where either you're maturing your relationship or a bump comes along, it's easy to give up. And I think that does have to do with emotional intelligence. It's like you kind of have to show up for yourself, right? And if you're not pushing yourself or stepping into those kind of situations, what are you doing? You're just gonna flee and go on to the next right. and start over again? Do you think it's emotional intelligence as much as more like self-awareness? Well, I think, yeah, you know, it has a lot to do with it, yeah. And, and the, the, like someone, I think you mentioned the uh, available options, right? Why even bother when right, you, yeah. like, there's so many in your inbox? Well, and I think too, when someone is, has a moment, they meet that person or they have this experience that makes the bubble go off, like, oh, I should look into this, which is a self thing to look into. That's very, very scary. So it's so much easier to just flight and go to the mm -hmm. next thing, right. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I think we saw that a lot with COVID, like people ha didn't have as many distractions. They couldn't go see all the women they wanted to see or the men they wanted to see. And they were alone in quietness with all the, the distractions and all the stuff started to come up and that's scary. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway. We hope people are working on themselves during this, right? <laughs> okay, so um, maybe we talk about the, the number of options, <laughs> right? So. I remember the, the numbers you gave me, right? Are you cool with sharing how many are your yeah. inbox and how <laughs> you responded to? I, in my hinge, I have over 100 in my inbox. And I have only swiped on someone that hasn't swiped on me yet like a few times. And then I've had a few conversations. So someone who swiped on me, I've liked them back and started some conversation. And then I've only met one person in person and it didn't go well. And it didn't go well. So were you able to, so you met once? One, yeah. And so you're able to discern pretty quickly something that you wasn't there or you didn't like. Yeah, well, we, you know, we actually went on like a handful of dates. And then as I got to know him better, I'm like, okay, no, gotta go. I, this isn't gonna work for me. Okay, so what didn't you find? Well, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be honest, he was a very, he was very successful, very hardworking, which for me, I have a very strong work ethic. And so that's super important for me. Um, he had clarity of where he wanted to go in life, but he was clearly stuck in some very negative cycles, very just depressing, like negative talk, depressing. Um, and it was like, I can't fix that. And then he also, I, I'm a very um, independent person and I'm a free thinker, I need my freedom. And he wanted to put parameters on me. And the moment you try to control me, I'm out. Like just mm -hmm. not, it's not gonna happen. I. I truly believe two people should have this mutual sense of freedom in a relationship, you know what I mean? Um, and so when he started saying things that made me feel like my freedom was limited and that was very controlling and even things to change my physical appearance, I'm like, wow. no. Nope. Wait, within how many dates? I was gonna just ask like, that. Um, so I'd, we had been talking and, and like hanging out for a few months, but he was on the road a lot, so we didn't see each other that frequently. Okay. So I just said bye. And how old is this guy? He's my age. Which is? Um, 30. 30. But at the time, I was 28, 28, 20, 28. So you, 28. You guys are two years apart. No, he, we are the same age. So this was a couple of Oh, okay. This okay, okay got it. He was 28 ago. and you were 28. Yeah. Wait, this is a while Or ago. I was like 29. Probably 29. Sorry, my time's all off. A year or two ago. I, just, I literally <laughs> just turned 30 like a week ago. Okay. So. All right. So, I mean, we're talking about 1% here, right? Yeah. 
1% that you're actually meeting and you didn't make it past four dates? About four or five. Okay. I, I actually had like some serious interest. I'm like, oh, there's, I think there's potential, but then, I mean, that's why you date. Mm -hmm. Why is why you take time to progress in a relationship because you start to uncover things and peel back the layers and you know, your true colors show rather than just your pretty hot pictures in your profile. <laughs> so that's interesting. I wanna get into profiles and what you're looking for. So, it, like I said, I, I'm new to this. But my understanding, especially when I grab my friend's phone and I just start swiping left and right, because that's fun. Um, I, you know, I thought it was much more about just fun, right? Yeah. But apparently that's not what a lot of women are looking for. And maybe it's just Hinge or- I was gonna say it depends on the app. Yeah. Is it just Tinder Hinge? is for fun. Right. Right, totally. where Hinge or Bumble even might be a little bit different, where Match.com yeah. is different. Mm -hmm. there, there's different levels mm -hmm. to the seriousness that's known. I kind of. think mm -hmm. on Bumble, yeah. you can also say like what your level of seriousness is. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. So did I just pick the serious app? Because I sent you that. Oh, is that how it happened? <laughs> I think Hinge is the best. Hinge was the best. So I was like, yeah. if you're going to try, let's try with Hinge. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I'm on a serious app, yeah. is what happened. I'm more serious. I mean, it's still, you have to weed, right? You still have yeah. to weed. It's more serious than Bumble and Tinder, in my opinion. plenty of fish is just for hooking up, right? Really? Okay. I don't know. I've never used it. Yeah. <laughs> I've only heard about I mean, it. Neither have I. I'm just saying. No. <laughs> it's okay, okay well, if you have not. That begs the question, <laughs> why are you two on Hinge instead of plenty of fish or Bumble or Tinder? I mean, I was on Bumble. I, I usually only try to stick to one because it's just overwhelming and so I don't want to be on my phone. I'm never really on my phone. So if I'm going to take the time, it should probably just be one. <laughs> so um, Hinge A, it was more serious or at least that's the idea. Mm. And it kind of slows you down where I don't need to be swiping forever and right, right, right. you can pick and choose a little easier and then actually relook at them and be like, okay, now do I want to talk to them? Or, you know, it's just, it kind of makes you think a little bit more and that's why I chose it. That's another thing. So I noticed, I sp just doing research, like reading articles, guys are swiping like furiously, right? <laughs> like this one dude in the Atlantic article, right? He's got to swipe through 300 just to get like a text response. Right. So he's just going through like hundreds. He's got it on a machine. Just. Right. <laughs> he's just saying yes, 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 as fast as the, the thing can load. But women aren't doing that, right? So. You guys are actually really discerning. Well, I will say when I was on Bumble and I was going through a tough emotional time, probably five years ago, it was completely for a distraction. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. not about anything else. It mm -hmm. was to it was to separate me from my emotions. And so my mentor had to call me out and be like, you know, you're just using that as a distraction, right? I'm like, oh yeah, I don't even really care to date any of these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, women do it too. Oh, you weren't even, you're just distracting yourself. 100%, yeah. because when it depends. came down to meeting, I was like, eh, I don't feel like it. I don't have the time. I don't have the effort. So I read somewhere like someone said, she'll install the app on a Tuesday, only after two hours of glass. Two, two glasses. Two glasses of wine, and then two hours of swiping, and then she'll uninstall it. Oh my right? gosh. It, it's like just like crush. watching a show or something. <laughs> I will say it is a lot more fun after a couple of cocktails. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So seriousness when you does flow with us yep. too. Yeah, yeah, it does for sure. Mm -hmm. 100%. Okay. So um, now I remember like I've had a conversation with, I've had a conversation with all of you talking about this and you guys are looking for something completely different than what I think most guys are putting in their profile, right? And I, I had no idea this was happening and I had no idea that women were so discerning with photos. <laughs> Not just like the, the type of photos, which we can get into, but the depth of like, uh, of observation in the photos, guys have no idea that you get, are, are doing that. So right. guys don't do that to girls' photos? I, at all. I, think I don't think so. They're just yeah. like, you're hot. Yeah, you're hot. Yeah. I mean, we also know what to post to get the it's true. <laughs> it's true. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys yeah. don't, I don't think. Okay, so <laughs> tell me, like, 
What turns you off in a guy's profile? Uh, you guys can get oh, it. Oh, man. There, you know, there's a spectrum. Um, obviously, there's general, like, people who have their general who they're physically attracted to. So there's, like, just that that general thing that I think is just nature. Mm -hmm. um, but then when it comes to when you're when they're really, like, posing it and what they're selecting, when they do too many with their niece or nephew with babies. My mom calls it the politician's move, mm -hmm. which is so true. It's hilarious. Um, or like they overdo it with the dogs. Like, oh, my best friend. And it's like, dogs are such a thirst trap for sure. Like that will for sure <laughs> clickbait a female. I definitely know that. But, <laughs> but you can tell. Overdo. I, can, I yes. can tell. And then the other signature one that I see a lot that I just is, kills me is the Leaning against a car, yes. which is looking out into the distance. A car they rented? Probably. Or a stranger's yeah. car? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I, uh, I don't know, but that's also a personal thing. Like, I get really turned off by overly materialistic type stuff. It's like, I don't, why do you need to flaunt that? You know what I mean? So we're coming back to the whole real thing. The mm -hmm. theme again. Mm -hmm. Or the shirtless selfies. Shirtless? Yeah. 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 How could I forget yeah, that? Like, I'm sorry. The surfing. The group photos. <laughs> There's a, There's whole a drink line in hand it, every time. Yep. Sunglasses yeah. and every photo so we don't know what you look like. So I'll be honest, and maybe this is edited out later. So truth be told, like I had my profile up for like a week or two, and I call Kanani. I'm like, hey, so, uh, like I felt like I was at a disadvantage. I'm like, am I supposed to have like a shirtless photo in here? Absolutely not. And she's like, oh, no, I, no, I didn't I call you. you. We were or date him. Right. And you were, we were texting. <laughs> and like, like, yes. yeah. like you sent back like a laughing emoji. And like, I was just yeah. like, so I'm getting no. So I, I, I didn't do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I've gotten, uh, like, I, I've asked some of my dates, like, so what was up with my photos? Or how are they different? And, and I didn't have... A, a surfing photo. Mm -hmm. um, I had a dog photo, but apparently my dog photo was. Yeah, you showed it to me. It was right. okay. It, it's like it's a, such a raw, authentic in the moment picture. Like there's, there's no posing, nothing. Okay. Like it's it's very it's very genuine. It's tasteful. So <laughs> I think my, I think um, it's my son's dog, and um, I think he must have had my phone. And so he snapped a, a just like yeah. a candid photo, and you can kind of tell it's candid because there's like my dishwasher is open, and it's like yeah. you can see my dirty dishes and the dogs there. Mm. Um, but I guess that y you can tell like what can you tell from that? Well, it's the it's the there's that or there's like the overposing with the dog. Like literally, it's like you can tell they're posing with the dog, and they maybe have more than one, and then they also have a comment about their dog mm -hmm. and. And some of them just overdo it. I can't explain it. It just mm -hmm. becomes this thing that I'm like, I know you probably posted Instagram stories and you get a million DMs from girls about how cute it is. So now it's on your... <laughs> yeah. Oh, so it works for them. Oh, yeah. I mean, I even, oh, yeah. if I post a dog that's not even mine, I don't even have one, I just get the most comments I've ever gotten. <laughs> like, dogs are the biggest <laughs> thirst. I don't know. <laughs> My old roommate, he had a dog. Best dog ever. Love that dog. And he... I always knew when he was thirst trapping on his Instagram with his dog. I'm like, I'd always give him shit. I'm like, did it again? Oh, you're thirst trapping with Joey. I see what you're doing. <laughs> okay. So here's what I'm getting. Uh, so far, I'm getting that uh, posting pictures of the dog works. Right? And maybe even the shirtless photos work. And maybe even the, the posing on a car works. For a certain type of girl. Just not for you guys. Right. Just for people that understand what yeah. you're doing. So it's like... But how many, how many women actually know don't or fall One step for further, what if the woman wants that shallow yeah. dog right. guy? Right? 100%. <laughs> yeah. They're just putting themselves in a category. So yeah. It's like, uh, that guy category. That yeah. guy. Well, yes. And that girl. For me, mm -hmm. it tells me, I'm like, okay, this guy is probably just trying to get some hits and to hook up and whatever because he's doing these very... And what standard, and or standard and thing. And it yeah. kind of makes you seem like you don't have a personality because you're just doing right. what everyone else is what doing. What you think they right. want. Right. So maybe those yeah. guys who are doing what everyone else does right. are, are having to swipe 300 times. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, they might not realize it. That's 
totally fair, 100%. So maybe if the guy wants to break out, increase his hit rate, mm -hmm. so that he doesn't have to swipe 300 times, he can try something else. If he's looking for something more like substantial, like I'm actually genuinely interested in meeting someone that I might date for some time. I'm not, it's not just like a surface level, I'm just trying to hook up, right. blah, 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 whatever. Right, you mentioned something about um, social media being today's white picket fence. Yeah, so I think of social media as the white picket fence of the 21st century. So back in the day when, when it was just, it was staple to have the white picket fence and your perfect cookie cutter home and your family of four, or whatever, when on the inside it's like, mom's getting beaten, dad's broke, he's an alcoholic, the kids are whatever, mm -hmm. like life's just broken, but they use the white picket fence to make everything look perfect, which is what people do on social media. They only post the best picture and the happiest moments and the this and the that. And it's, it leaves, um, it's very misleading. Mm -hmm. And then I think it also in turn puts this social pressures on people to be something right. that they think they're supposed to be, but they're not and they don't have to be. So both they're not and they don't have to be. And Correct. if you're following that, it messes with your psych. Absolutely. So now you're, I don't know, going now, somewhere you don't want to go. Right, it's or you're trying to be life. someone you're not, and then you attract the wrong partner. Now you're with the wrong partner. Right, so it's all sorts of messed right. up, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And even if you do attract the right partner, you probably can't live up to the expectation because that's not you. Right. But, so I'm also understanding that even if they were try, able to attract the right partner, they, they probably wouldn't because you guys are so discerning, you would know. You would know in either the chat or the first video date. Right, it or always comes out. Yeah. You know what I think is crazy? When I hear a guy say I don't have Facebook or Instagram, I want to marry him right away. Right, you're like, I, I want to know like, you. <laughs> what? <laughs> you are so amazing. Tell me all about you. I think it's the hottest Interesting. thing ever. It is hot. Because it shows that they don't give a shit about any yeah. of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you guys feel the same. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm also getting this kind of like counter trend, right? Where, let's say, pre-2020, it was all about getting as much information, as much of yourself out there onto as many different social media platforms just so you could cast the widest net, you know, you know beyond, let's say, the city you live in into the entire world, internationally, right? But now I'm getting the sense that maybe that was inauthentic, maybe that was lacking any sort of real connection, and now we want it maybe smaller, more real, more genuine. I think we're just overwhelmed. I think we're inundated and overwhelmed and we're over it. We kind of want to be more private, mm -hmm. more secluded, more, more real connections than mm -hmm. we do with scrolling and reading and seeing. We're just kind of over it. I'd rather it. have five of the right people in my life than 500. Right. So casting a wide net just gets me a bunch of junk that doesn't work for me or my purpose or theirs. So we're both at a loss. Mm -hmm. I mean, how recent is this? I mean, how long have you felt this way? I mean, I, the whole, my whole, when I say social media is a white picket fence of the 21st century, I said that 10 years ago before everything okay. blew up. But I think I was just having to be ahead of my time. But it's only gotten stronger and stronger and stronger. In the last probably couple years, it's gotten really strong. Right. Yeah. And so what if people just don't, guys just don't realize this? What if guys are actually feeling the way that you feel, but they're so caught up in what they're supposed to do, or what they think they're supposed to do, that they just don't realize this? I mean, how likely is that? I think that's ex extremely likely. And not just for guys, I think both men and women. Mm -hmm. our, our whole lives were told, don't do this, do that. This is what, this is what gets you successful. This is da, da 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 And so we get so detached from our authentic selves, we completely lose ourselves. And then we just think we're supposed to do what society tells us to do and what other people are doing because that's what everyone's doing. But just because everyone's doing it doesn't necessarily make it right. right. Or doesn't mean there's opportunity for change or to just do it differently. Mm -hmm. So what's a guy to do? <laughs> Have a conversation just like this. 
an authentic, like, heart connection, like, real conversation about what a friendship is looking for or a partnership or anything, right? Be vulnerable enough to have the conversation. Right. Okay. That's the problem. Yeah, the vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. be authentic, be vulnerable. But that's like telling someone to relax, right? right? <laughs> Great. They would love to be that way, but, ha like, the question is how, right? How is a guy supposed to do that? Tune into self, get to know self. I was gonna say, I think it's just a lot Quiet that, time. and I mean, I don't have anything to support this, but it's just a feeling that women do the work way more than men, mentally and for themselves. So I just think they have to do it and just see that how important it is. It's really hard because you could never tell somebody to do the work. Right, right. <laughs> Something has to happen where they're like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Light bulb, I know what I need to do. And and, the, and and for the record, the work never stops. Right, ever. But it's just, you can't tell someone to do it unless you have a certain relationship where you are that person that triggers it, but that, yeah. you can't predict that. Like you, I, I, I how do yeah. I explain it? Yeah. Self-awareness yeah. is going it's back to what we said at the beginning, just. Self-awareness. So those trends have been happening for, what, 10 years? Especially, when did yoga, yoga took off, at least here in LA, like 20 years ago, yeah. right? So this has been happening for a while. But I think it, now it's really starting to cement itself in the expectations of women, right? I was just thinking that as you said it, I feel like, at least from my, what I've seen the past five years is the pressure that men are under to show up and provide all these things, they're losing they're losing their, their EQ and they're going way t more towards this anxiety ridden like mm -hmm. push. It's very interesting. Tell me more about that. What do you mean by? To produce. To you, produce. Guys are, you guys are taught to produce to and make money. Be and you're successful. You are good if you're successful. Where we're looking for, you're good if you can have a, a heart conversation. <laughs> it's completely different. So that's going to screw a lot of men up, right? Because we've been working really hard <laughs> to, produce, to be successful right? and produce. And we want you to get quiet and go do the work. <laughs> the thing is, too, I, I, I feel for men because the, when one of the articles talks about this, how their careers are changing, like they're not, they don't have as much hands-on labor. Women are also succeeding in the workplace, so now they're more. We're getting a little bit more equal, yeah. which is different, and it's a new space, um, new dynamics to navigate. But then also, men have been conditioned by society to repress emotions. Mm. You are not a man oh, if you cry yes. or if you do this or you do that. But it's like, no, cry. Like I think it's so hard. You. Yes, cry, please. <laughs> And so I think they're kind of lost because they don't know how to express right. their emotions or feel or process them. And Kanani knows all about this. Locking the emotions in your yeah. body manifests itself in many, mm -hmm. many negative ways, it's physically, and mentally, spiritually. Okay, so now we're talking about masculinity. We're in that realm, yeah. right? And you want someone to be emotionally expressive and also be able to be aware of their emotions and probably manage them and express them, right? Am I getting that right? Process that. Yeah, Process I them. think I need to elaborate though. I was thinking about this on the way here. 10 years ago before I did my own work and a guy cried, I'd be like, oh, uh-uh. Mm. Yeah. You're, you're way too attached. There's too much enmeshment. I would completely in my mind belittle him because I hadn't done my work. And so it takes a real woman, I feel like, or a woman that has the EQ to allow a man to to have those emotions, yeah. right? So it's a very sensitive, touchy subject. I feel like we're trying to figure out, we're rebalancing what it means to be right. masculine and yeah. feminine. Yeah, right. right, yes. That's what, so let's dig into that. So what is being masculine to you guys today? I, I, I got the like EQ part, what else? For me, it's being honest no matter what. Be honest no matter what. I mean, you can say it gently, but you don't have to sugarcoat it, candy coat it, walk on eggshells. You're you're really just honest. So, and that's allowing me to have, be able to accept what you're saying and hold a space. I'm used to men really taking care of my feelings. That drives me crazy. Wait, say that again? I'm used to men trying to take care of my feelings. Like, oh. they don't shoot you straight. They'll 
dance over here. Right. And I'm, I like to be with friendships and men. Talk to me as if I can handle the truth. Mm -hmm. Like, just shoot me straight. Mm -hmm. So that's what that means to me. I think, obviously, confidence and not cockiness is very masculine to me. I mean, that's what's attractive, too. But just same thing, just someone being so confident in who they are and understanding themselves shows me how strong and masculine you are, just because that's what I'm looking for. Right. I mean, I don't know. I don't need someone to fit the stereotypes of a man to be masculine. I want you to be able to be strong and show up for me. And that in turn makes me like feel attracted to you in a masculine way. Safe. So yeah. let's, let's go a little further deeper into strong. Mm -hmm. So I, I get the sense that you, the strong you're talking about is emotional awareness, confidence, anything else? Um, I think a lot of times too, if they haven't done the work. Seeing women's emotions terrifies men <laughs> in, in a spectrum of ways. Yes. Yeah. So I think being strong and listening to me, taking in what I'm saying to you, going back to the emotional intelligence, taking in what I'm saying to you without reacting and being childish and yeah. playing games, sure. that is so attractive to me in a guy. So being strong in, yes, the emotional way, but just mentally being there safety, having this space of support. I'm going to be who I want to be. I'm going to do things whether they're out of character or not. And then I, I want my person to be strong enough to know who I am and listen to me and then okay. be able to <laughs> accommodate the emotions. So what may be interesting and so, certainly interesting for me is I don't know how how far we're into this podcast, but right. we've been talking about all the inner calls. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the fact that we're just talking about the inner qualities negates the out the outside qualities, the, the traditional ones. Right. Right? No. We're not we're not saying that those aren't important. Mm -hmm. We just haven't talked about them. Mm -hmm. Are they still important? Attraction is important. Like physically, right? Yeah, I think you have to have a physical chemistry with mm -hmm. somebody. Like for me, when people are like, what's your physical type? I'm like, I really don't have one because those inner qualities will make you hot. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And you okay. from surf it like from your like out exterior, you could be the hottest guy, like just perfect, beautiful <laughs> cover of GQ, whatever, yeah. washboard abs. But if you have a shitty inside and a shitty personality, uh, you are not hot anymore. Right, that only lasts so long. So what about <laughs> the reverse? Yeah. What do you mean? What, what if he's beautiful on the inside? Well, then, yeah. Then what if he's not? So it, what if he's not the cover of GQ? My physical, like my percep physical perception will change based on the, the inside. So, so like he's, he's got more leeway. First impression, I might yeah. be like, yeah. I don't know, if, I don't know. But then the moment he starts talking and we're connecting and mm -hmm. sharing things, whatever, then I'll be like, it'll it'll change. Right. Your comfortability makes it comes out in the more comfortable you are with somebody too. To an How extent, I feel right. like though, to because I'm a health and yes. wellness coach, so I've yeah. oh. so many men that were amazing on the inside, but the fact that they were very lazy, um, not physically fit, they ate horribly. I just couldn't, right. I and couldn't get down like that. That's a lifestyle, it's my lifestyle. Job, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So but he, I do not want I agree with that. I do not want the six pack. That's a complete turn off to me because it, nine out of 10 times they were shallow. Right. And that's not what I want. I'd much rather have the insides be fit. Right. And we'll sure. work on the outside. Right. They will work on the outside. <laughs> not we. They. But we've yeah. talked about this, right? You haven't been able to find something I have not. In, in the, what do we call it? Woke I call men? it physically fit and eat. You fit. I've, right. I've always right. had to settle for one or the other, and I'm 46. I've always had to until now. So it's a lifestyle matchup. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. So physical still does matter. And have you been able to find that? Someone who's emotionally intelligent, mentally strong, <laughs> and fit. <laughs> There's some smiles. Yeah. We're still on the apps, aren't yeah. we? We're, we're still, still on the apps. apps. <laughs> so we're, are we saying we're looking for a unicorn now? No. Nope. It kind of no. feels that way, right? Or, or, or <laughs> like, so this is also what I wanted to dig into. Are we 
have, have the expectations maybe on both sides, men and women, just greatly increased? Is that what we're saying? I'm the opposite. Mine decreased after listening to the Hinge talk and the Jay Shetty talks and a lot of um, books. And li- I realized that my expectations were s- the unicorn. And I've learned to do the work with this man that I'm with now. And I'm doing the work. And that's what it was about is sticking through it, going through the mud. Um, mm-hmm. If he has the integrity that I wanted and doing the work, I kept just mm-hmm. leaving because I was the expectations. Yeah. So I, I guess I kind of just feel, I just have low confidence in the dating apps, I guess. And I, I don't know. I just feel like the right, I will meet the right guy. How am I supposed to meet the right guy? And I'm not going to expect it to happen this way or that way or whatever. And I'm also like, yeah, sure. There's, there's certain qualities and values and things that I want to align, but I'm not going to hold them like cement concrete can't change a bit. Like Mm -hmm. you got to let things ebb and flow a little bit, right? especially because we constantly keep evolving too, to a degree, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you find things about each person that you like, and then you just see where it goes. Yeah. And I think when you have so many expectations, you're just setting yourself up to totally. be disappointed. Totally. Honestly. I mean, there's non-negotiables, right? You have, you should have, I think everyone should have a couple non-negotiables, like smoking cigarettes. I will not date a smoker. Right. I just won't. Yeah. It's a non-negotiable right. for me. However, if you have this over here, I'm probably going to grow with that. I'd yeah. be okay with that. Right. So we have our own non-negotiables, I think. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, as long as the list isn't so long, yeah, because then you pigeonhole yourself. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Although you know, all right. So I'm just trying to wrap my head around where we've come to in this conversation. So the expectations are different, right? And it sounds like the inner qualities are coming first, but not at the expense of all the outer qualities, right? The, the ambition, the, the um, drive to succeed is still important. Mm-hmm. Being physically fit is still important. Mm-hmm. But now we're adding some of the inner game or a lot of the inner game mm-hmm. onto it. And then when we talked about technology, you know, it was a sense that it used to be about more and faster. And now it's about deeper, slower, fewer connections. So it's not, it's not about whether technology is good or bad, it's about how you're using the technology. Mm-hmm. I think that quality mm-hmm. or quantity, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you can use Hinge differently. Right, right, you, totally. You guys can tell in the profile, and Hinge is like, what, there are uh, maximum six photos, three prompts, mm-hmm. and two sentences per prompt. I mean, there's six sentence on, uh, six yeah. sentences mm, right. on there, right? It doesn't give you much. Right, but so you're even, just picking one thing you like, and. Yeah, even <laughs> that, you, you guys mm-hmm. can tell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if that is all the case, now I'm wondering if COVID has changed anything. Has COVID accelerated <laughs> this idea that it used to be about more and like looser connections to fewer, deeper connections, right? Yeah. So we started briefly talking about this earlier. Um, An observation I had was Instagram, for example, was filled with a lot of just very materialistic, shallow white picket fences. (laughs) Let's just call it that. And what was interesting, and so kind of like, it seemed technology, social media started to proliferate the connecting in the wrong way, I guess. It was, let me show you how great my life is, right. and, and yeah. you're gonna, you, now you feel bad about it, or pump, pump my tires a little bit more, give me likes, this and that, whatever, where COVID happened and we literally could not, we couldn't do anything. We couldn't go out and socialize like we used mm-hmm. to. And so we actually, like, I, I feel like a lot of the, um, the population shifted to how they started using technology. And I, I believe they were using it how it was supposed to be, which is to truly connect with somebody mm-hmm. because you couldn't. Like the amount of times I started FaceTime with my family more, yeah. mm-hmm. it was ridiculous. And then you started seeing things on Instagram where people were sharing tips and ideas on how to cope with mm-hmm. this or how to like 
get creative and stay busy and whatever. And, and it was beautiful. And then digital concerts and mm -hmm. people reaching out and just consoling one another and actually having true compassion mm -hmm. versus let me just, you know, yeah, the, the, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have, I've had an observation. I think, um, during the COVID time, and it kind of goes along this theme of like deeper, fewer connections. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, the come over to my place, you know, and let's cook <laughs> was like date, I don't know, five, mm -hmm. six, seven, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I, it's like date two. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> really? So like, I think date one, it, like I think you mentioned this, the wine and hike. Wine walks. Wine walks, wine right. Walks. Oh, wine yeah, walks. I like that. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah. So like, you know, it's outside. You're not facing each other. It right. reduces the yeah. risk. It's comfortable. That's date one. Mm -hmm. And then like a couple phone calls, maybe a video call in between then. And then date two is like, hey, let's cook at my house. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Which to me, I think is, it forced people to connect in a much more authentic way with way less distractions going on. Right. And I thought that I thought that was beautiful. If that's what they're going for, because then I've had the same or the opposite <laughs> where it's like, I don't need a pen pal I, or like a text I've station shit. Yeah. I've heard pen pal so many yeah. times. I don't, I don't need a pen pal. I don't need that where you're just looking to talk to somebody because you cannot be alone in your own thoughts. <laughs> and I've had the uh, people that are like, oh, I can't like, yeah, let's meet up. Oh, wait. Oh. And then it's like, but they'll text me every day, multiple times a day. It's like, what is this? Attention. Yeah. Stop, stop yeah. Contacting. That's like the whole distraction thing. It like, is. They yeah. need, yeah. It's like, instead of watching Netflix, they're so just it's like, totally, it's totally both, texting. I think. I think it's 50, yeah. 50 for the most part. I mean, give or take. Well, and then on the flip side for someone that's in yeah. a relationship, um, I'm way less likely to break up with him because it's safe, it's comfortable, oh, yeah. and I don't want to go on TV. Uh, right so it kind of keeps you in, you know, to do the deeper work if you need to. So on the flip side. So I've I've had people mention like a pen pal. I've had I've had um, <laughs> uh, women thank me for like, asking for like a video call. Right? Because I, I don't think guys are used to asking and they don't know when to ask. Right? I don't think anyone was. I think that was very relatively yeah. new. Yeah, that was a, yeah, I've, yeah. Just, I've never done that, that with a guy the on whole, dating. Right. Yeah, yeah. No. the whole video chat was not huge on dating apps before COVID. Right. Yeah. So they it was a new a thing. Oh. I wish. I would have saved myself like 30 horrible yeah. dates. <laughs> right. So I've heard twice now. Yeah. They're like, and they'll, they won't say it to me, to my face, but right after the video call, they'll text thank me. Thank you for being like, you. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for being you, but they're like, that's great. You look exactly like yeah. your photos. Oh my God. Right? <laughs> so I guess that's like a, you know, um, it's a way to weed out the catfish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, and it also accelerates the process because I guess there's a lot more connectivity when you can Definitely. see and interact. With yeah. yeah. Or hear their voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, pick up their their body language. Yes. And then, it, but then it's a whole other level when you're in person. Because I think about when I'm on like conference calls for work, and you just miss so much. Mm -hmm. But I do. And back to dating. One of my friends did a lot of the FaceTime dating, and she was totally catfished. This guy would wear like a hat, and like <laughs> it would be kind of like weird lighting, and then you, you, you couldn't still see his height. And she's like, I met him, and he was super short and looked nothing like. So there's ways face. around it. Yeah. yeah. But, but for the most yeah. part, I think it definitely helps, you know, helps you learn more about the person without having to spend the time physically in person with them. Yeah, eye connection. Yeah. All that stuff. Interesting. Interesting. All right, so. I, I, I want to know why you're a unicorn, because only you and my other mentor have I ever met in 46 years. It's both physically fit and emotionally fit. And I, that's for me personally, so I know it's happened to other women. Why are you guys so damn rare? Or am I just not meeting the unicorns? I don't know. I don't either. Um, I can guess. I can guess because, you know, especially in LA, it's a super competitive environment, right? right? So to be successful in LA is really tough. Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta pour in all your time and energy to work mm -hmm. so that you can be successful, so that you can provide or have that nice car to pose against, right? <laughs> Um, 
And then you just don't have time to either work out or do the work. You know what I just thought of? I know you, and I know my mentor. I bet I've met a million unicorns, but they, I, we didn't have enough time for the layers to come off so I could see the unicorn. Yeah. That just like a huge epiphany. Wait, oh, so you, yeah, you probably how ran. Yeah, you want to bet? I've met a lot of men that had both, but we didn't spend enough time together for me to see their heart or their EQ. Where I know you and Enrique very well as a person who you guys are, so I know through and through you're both. Right? Huh. Where men probably show up with all these masks. Right? This goes back to the whole genuine authenticity. Yeah, and thing. the ego yeah. shows mm-hmm. up instead of the heart. Mm-hmm. So, interesting. So, that's interesting. It's weird that um, through this accelerated time of technology, where people are on apps mm-hmm. and seemingly less connected to people, more superficially connected. There's a theme coming up that is desiring more genuine connection. And even through the apps, you can tell when when you come across someone genuine. So maybe I, I, I want to hear about that. How can you tell through an app, through a photo? I mean, you kind of touched on it with it's like the conversation the first few sentences sentences something comes out and you're like oh or just doesn't match up with maybe your it's a vibe i can't explain it's like this energetic it's it's something that i don't know that you can put into words it's Oh, those guys well, who are uh, listening are like, no, I mean, give me something. It has a lot to do with the pictures. I mean, we're, we're seeing who you are through your photos. So if you're posting materialistic stuff, okay, that's probably who you are, right? Obviously. Um, in the prompts, if you are answering a question with one word, Mm. I hear one more Taco Tuesday. Oh my uh, do you see that too? I don't understand. Like, I don't a understand. A lot of guys use the same answers, and that's when you know that's the easiest. You're yeah. Like, okay, seen that before. Yeah. Seen that no Taco before. Tuesdays. No Taco Tuesdays. I know the best place in town for tacos. I yeah. Know the best place in town for you know it's like the same thing. <laughs> like what else? <laughs> oh gosh. I mean. Um. Um. You have to get along with my dog. You, my mom would. My cat will like you. What? what yeah, my I mom just, would say no. I'm her favorite, or like just. Or if they, if they, text message you with way too many emojis, it's just like, come on, bro. Way too many? Like <laughs> more than two. <laughs> but in like, like a, a re- like in a really cheesy way, like or like, hey cutie, or like, hey hey babe, oh, or hey darling, or hey. hey like, what, what are you doing tonight, beautiful? It's just like, oh, sh- sh- shut the front door. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if you meant that genuinely and you weren't just trying to, like, it, I don't know. I maybe, I, I will have some, like, uh, humility here. I might be just jumping to the gun on all of them mm-hmm. too quickly. Like, some of them might genuinely mean it. But a lot of times it just feels like you're just saying cutesy things that right. you think girls are gonna be like, oh my God. There's a copy paste. Like, yeah. Like you're just, you're saying I know, this to every person. You I know, know guys. <laughs> Not authentic. Some of my guy friends have shown me, they're like, Andrea, every girl, I just send, send the, hey cutie with the crazy face emoji <laughs> with the tongue out winking. I mean, eventually and it they works. Go, every time I get a hit back, I'm like, mm-hmm. what? Mm-hmm. So they literally, like guys have their programs and that's just what I assume. Copy I'm like, paste. you're just copy pasting. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <laughs> it does work, but not for you guys. Because it's not what I want. I'm not into that. Unless we're a couple drinks in and we're like, <laughs> all right, well, and Yeah, unless I want to like banter. I love Before. banter. Yeah. I will we're say, not taking it seriously then, right? So right. just like, totally what's different. up? So and now, now we're matching where they are. They'd be like, so what am I supposed to do? Just keep trying and be authentic. Okay, so... But authentic is scary, right? Because they have to think, and it's got to be original. Well, yeah. And like, I don't know what works. And but you asked a question be not being authentic. Right, you asked a question what, on a picture, what do, we, what do we look for? Real recognizes real. Right. And so if we're, in a, we're, if we're grounded in a space of being grounded, and we're coming from a, a place of relationship, that's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for just that. Real recognizes real. Well, and Show I us guess... You. 
my advice would be if if you're a guy looking for something more substantial, like you're not just trying to hook up or whatever, ask yourself this. If is what I'm posting, will this enable me to attract the right person that I actually genuinely want to be with and that I can be myself with? Ask yourself, do you want to attract the wrong person and be wrapped up in some business you don't want to be wrapped up in, of being with a partner you don't want to be with? Ask yourself that before you go. You make your posts. So choose what you want to right. What are say you putting or, out there? Because you'll get it back. Correct. Self awareness, right? Mm -hmm. The awareness around it. Mm -hmm. What do you really, when you're casting that net, are you really? You have the awareness around what net you're casting, right? What you're trying to attract. Mm -hmm. I think most men sorry, or most people just cast it. Mm -hmm. They have yeah. no, they're not even in tune with, am I ready for the relationship or do I want to have sex? They're just kind of like feeling, putting feelers out there. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Just be more aware of what you're going for and then stay authentic in that space. Mm -hmm. It's like if you were to start a business, you wouldn't try to sell the business to, or sell your product or whatever to every single person. You want to hit your target market. Right. Right. Because that's going to be successful for the, your Not client. Not rugs and toothbrushes. And your business. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm... God, if I thought about all this, I'd be like, oh, shit. Overwhelmed? Yeah. But I'd then you like, go get quiet and think about it. I <laughs> guess. It is overwhelming to hear. You said right, it best, yeah. though. Like, what you put out, you will get back. Yes. That's so just, all we're saying. Yes. Totally. <laughs> to summarize this whole thing for you. <laughs> But the worst is one day when you want the relationship, the next day you don't. <laughs> That's the worst. Because then you just go back and forth between, like, <laughs> so get clear. So I'm reminded, I think I, I may have told one or all you guys this story. Um, Ten years ago, I had a, a mentor, and he wrote a dating book. Right? Mm -hmm. It was called Double Your Dating. And he made a crap ton of money off of it. <laughs> right? But that wasn't the original name of the book. The original name was How to Be a Better Man. Mm. But no guy wanted to buy a book on How to Be a Better Man. Mm. They wanted dates. So he recontextualized the whole book around dating, right? And let's say there are 12 chapters. First two chapters were about, like, you know, how to approach a woman, how to get a number, of like cute little pickup lines. But then chapters three to 12 was, hey, you're not going to hold on to this woman unless you learn how to be a, a really good man and this is how to do it. I feel like that's where this conversation yes. yeah. is going. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? And, exactly. And in all guys' defense, it's not just men, it's women oh, too. Oh yeah, totally. Like this isn't just a male versus female thing, it's, it's everybody. Yeah. Right. It really so is. So that's it. So do you think we're actually going through a change like in, in a larger level? Like, I hope so. I know, I hope oh, yeah. So. It, like, culturally or subculturally, we're going to something more real. We want multi, we want to be multifaceted. Mm -hmm. We want a partner who's multifaceted. Oh, by the way, we want a partner, right? Yeah, that's a growth spurt. I think we're going through so many cultural, systemic, et cetera, yeah. changes on many levels. And I think relationships, what it means to be masculine or feminine, this and that, how we have a successful relationships, it's, it's all being transformed, I think. I really do. So I was just thinking about like, you know, if I were to try to boil it down to someone who's either having trouble using the dating apps or, or just gonna start out, maybe it's, hey, just give it a shot and forget everything you know yeah. mm -hmm. and just try to put out what you think totally. is right yes. for you. Yes, 155%. And if that doesn't yes, work, then they can always revert back to whatever <laughs> yes. it is. If people would just show Tuesdays. up without the smoking mirrors, it gives us a chance to see you and hear you and like give me a chance to stay or not. But mm -hmm. with the smoking mirrors, you have no chance. Well, and your uniqueness is going to attract the, yes. the uniqueness you desire, and mm -hmm. you're gonna that person will show up. Don't get, don't get overwhelmed with, okay, well, everyone does this kind of picture and does that, and I'm supposed to do this and whatever. It's like f it, like no, like no. Just because what do most people to, do yeah. does not mean it's the right thing. Like, right. we get so yeah. many pressures and things projected onto us, and in, in our world today, it's ridiculous. 
Right. Regardless of what you look like, if there's some quirkiness or personality coming through your That's profile, cool. I always just, yeah. let's see. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. By the way, so this is the guy who took the photo that has gotten the most response. And dude, it was me in the hat. Yeah, I picked just it. Just a black hat, black t-shirt, and maybe what, black like pants. Yeah, no, he was like leaning against a wall or something. Yeah, it was right? one of the last that one? ones we took too. Because yeah. we finally just. It was yeah, just yeah. super yeah. natural and like innocent. Yeah, that's oh, what I said innocent. to him. Yeah. Wait, did you hear that? What? Say that again. It was like the last group of photos. This is finally when he put down the tone he thought everyone sees. Mm -hmm. like, yes. Yeah, and that's what that's I loved about it. Mm -hmm. It was it was like this innocent, <laughs> like free spirited. Like he was super open. Yeah. But I was like this one. He's like, really? Yeah. I said yes. That one. Yeah. Not posy. Uh, so good. Yeah. You just look so genuine and just like. So he said something like that because we were taking professional photos like, yeah, for LinkedIn. Yeah. And then I, I put on a hat and he's like, oh yeah, you're much better in a hat. He's like, this looks more like you. Right? I have a question. Is your profile, does it have all professional photos? Good. No, about half. So I think, the, no, two professional photos, three not. Yeah. Well, he's yeah. getting like 5,000 hits, so. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. He's not, that, he's not going hungry. <laughs> <laughs> this one right here. It, it's been Speaking a little surprising. Of which. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. What time is it? Hold on. Okay. Okay. Oh, we're good. <laughs> I only have 15 minutes away. Um, yeah. Anyway, so thank you for that photo. Um, all right. Well, it seems like we're coming to a, a good spot. Like, you know, just to reiterate, guys, just uh, three kinds. Yeah, put it out there. Yeah. I, I think it's just going to take a little courage. Oh yeah. To just be yourself and figure yeah. out what that is um, and, got, and just put some time and thought into it. Out. Right, 100%. It takes courage yeah. from all of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just um, being open-minded to, to yourself, like trying to not let your your ego yeah. keep you yeah. keep you small, because mm -hmm. your ego does keep you small. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Those fears, those little voices, you know, whatever. Um, so F them. Yeah. <laughs> So I have a question. What are men looking for, Tony? And not just like the superficial, oh, but like what are men that have the EQ and the healthy lifestyles? What are they looking for? Right? Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I think I can only speak for myself. Um, and what I'm looking for has changed, um, you know, over time. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, so I... I'm divorced. I was separated eight or nine years ago. And eight or nine years ago, like after being, I was in a 16 year relationship, you know, that was a whole different ball game, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but, it, so I, I think I, I went through an evolution, but now, um, you know, it's interesting. So I've done the work mm -hmm. and um, my teacher, um, uh, who's been guiding me for the last 10 years, she said something that really stuck with me. She said, listen, in your next relationship, if you're looking for you know, something that's really gonna fulfill you and grow, grow you, it's not gonna feel familiar. And I was like, holy shit. Because if it felt familiar, I'll probably get what I had before. Mm, right. Yeah. So what familiar f felt like before was, I didn't know what love was, mm -hmm. yeah. and I was confusing love and lust. Yeah. Right. right? So this whole idea of chemistry and lust is very um, impactful for me yeah. because that's familiar. And I know what type that usually came with mm -hmm. and I know the feelings that that, <laughs> that brought. <laughs> so um, I'm very cognizant of that and very aware of like those type of feelings. So what I'm looking for is something oh, I think it, it's, it is in my profile. Something a little more real. I'm looking for someone who's genuinely happy. Because that's super hard to do. Yeah. But I've run across women who are just like happy. Right? And, and then, you know, someone who's like, uh, who's, I guess, deeper. Right? Yeah. Uh, that, that isn't to say the surface level stuff is is bad it's just not me i tend not yeah. to i mean 
we d- dive deep into all sorts of things in this podcast. I, I just like the deeper stuff. That's all. Right. Well, I yeah. love what you said when I asked you at the beach. You said you named 11 things. And the ones yeah. that really caught my ear where you said you wanted the woman that motivates you to be better. Yeah. And that's really important because yeah. we forget that. Like, this is your partner. And they need yeah. to encourage you and, and push you mm-hmm. to be better. And then you said another one. I don't quite remember what it was, but it really just like struck a chord and I was like, take notes. Okay. You were taking notes. <laughs> yeah, I did. I'm adding this to my profile like, of what um, I want. Someone who can partner. self-regulate. Yes, yeah, that's, yeah, what, that's what it was. Yeah. Someone who can self-regulate. Yeah. It's like, can you manage your emotions? Right, yeah. right. And that, right. a lot of people, not even men, because women I know, oh, they yeah. cannot self-regulate. They yeah. didn't learn the attunement from when they were children and they mm-hmm. never learned it. And that's yeah. Yeah. huge in a relationship. Yeah. Right. So, and I like I, So, last little anecdote. Um, so my teacher, after my last relationship, I learned a ton. Uh, she really encouraged me to make a list. I was like, ah, I've had plenty of lists. She's like, this one's different because you've went through a huge growth period. So she encouraged me to make a list, and I have 11 things. And one of 11 is physically attractive, right? But as I started dating, I was like, wait, so I know this is only one out of 11, but how do I weight this one? And so I had a session with her, and she's like, okay, well, this is fairly easy. And I was like, oh, okay, do tell. How do I do this? And she said, let's focus on your physical sensations. And for men, someone like you, sight and sound are most important. I'm like, good to know. Didn't know that. So she says, picture one of the women who you're, you like, but you're just not sure about the physical attraction. I said, yep, got her. And... She says, Do you, can you see her in your mind's eye? I was like, yep. And she says, what's your first response? I was like, ah, kind of cringing a bit. She's like, okay, now let's do sound. Can you hear the sound of her voice? I was like, yep. And she says, what happens? I was like, um, nails on the chalkboard. And she said, well, so that's a non-starter. That's as far as you need to go. Those are not conceptual, logical rationalizations. Those are your body's responses. Yeah. And I was like, right. well, fuck. What, like, I wish I knew that before, right? So I felt like I was fighting myself right. to like, not be shallow. But I was like, I, you know, if I'm not physically attracted, I'm not physically attractive. Yeah. attracted. Right, true. Do you guys go, any, go through anything like that? Or how do you guys oh, yeah. determine that? <laughs> no, it's a non-negotiable. I mean, come on. It might sound shallow, but it's true. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if that's true. I mean, but what if the guy doesn't have a six pack? I don't, I already that's said fine. that. I go the opposite of a six pack. It takes dad so bug? much. No, like in between the dad bod <laughs> and oh, the wow. six. Let's not go that far. Was that a passing fad, the whole dad bod? I don't is know. Is still around? Yeah, I don't I know who's on that day. fad, but not me. <laughs> okay, not dad bod, but you don't have to go to six pack. No, because it takes so much time and effort away from life yes. to to all that work that pe- people don't understand how much work it takes to get a six pack and mm-hmm. like right. what are you four percent body fat? It takes so yeah. much mm-hmm. work. <laughs> Infrared sauna. Yeah. Right. Cheater. <laughs> right. I still like to eat and drink. So yes. I have yeah. to have a buddy. You have to live. <laughs> okay. Cool. Anything else? Parting I words mean, of wisdom. Shoot, I meet better. I meet people in person better than anything. Yeah. So just I want you to start. Corona an app. needs to be over, and then I can go <laughs> round oh. them up. <laughs> so you would rather have someone to just approach you? I mean, I do better with seeing people's mannerisms, Same. hearing yeah, yeah. their voice, how Feeling, their body language yeah. is, and that tells me a lot. Yeah. Mm. If you have nice eyes, though, <laughs> I'll give you a chance. Yeah. Kind of. I want you to create an app. I told you that. <laughs> A dating app? Yeah, for the woke fit guy. Oh, the woke. Oh. <laughs> the woke we'll change fit the name, <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, the woke fit guy. I don't know. Okay, uh, maybe. Yeah, I'll be your product manager. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, all right, we have we have uh, the the makings of a possible business. If anybody could do it, Tony, it's you. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much for being here. I I had a great time and hopefully this is informative to uh, (laughs) viewers and listeners. Thanks for having us. Thank you.